Well, welcome to another edition of God Again. It's Friday afternoon. Linda and I just drove up into the mountains, found a nice place to camp. And in this uh, episode, I want to talk to you about why we travel the way we do. Stick around. When we first started looking for a campsite this afternoon, they were all taken. It's going to be a really nice weekend, nice weather, and every spot had somebody in it, but then we kind of know where to go, and we headed up on a different road, and we found this spot, and it's nice and quiet and secluded right on the creek. You know, there are so many different types of RVs so many different ways to travel and see this beautiful United States and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how we ended up with what we have because we went through a number of different type of outfits before we got to this and what we do isn't for everybody and a lot of people probably wouldn't even want to do what we do getting out into the wilder areas you know but Basically, Linda and I started out, we didn't have any money, we still don't, but we started out with a 1970s beat up 14 foot camp trailer. <laughs> it didn't even have a working heater in it. it. It smelled of mold and mildew and dry the rot. The floors did that. <laughs> yeah, the floors were wavy. And we had a Ford pickup truck long bed six cylinder engine gutless wouldn't get out of its own way let alone pull that trailer but we suffered with that for a couple of years i could never get a decent night's sleep in it there it just did the bunk setup was horrible but we eventually got rid of that and we bought a 26 foot travel trailer and a 454 suburban to pull it with and we drug that all over the western part of the United States and it was so comfortable. It, I mean it had a beautiful forced air heating system, nice sofa, <laughs> walk around queen bed. It had a for, the forced air heat went right into the bathroom so you had this nice warm air and it was quiet and comfortable. And we always stayed in RV parks because that's what you do with a trailer like that. You got to be able to plug it in to run everything. You know, ice cream in the freezer. And <laughs> we, it was nice. We really loved it. But we always had to stay in RV parks. And we couldn't get out so much into the areas where we wanted to be. A little more secluded, a little more quiet. Like this. Yeah, I like this place. It was nice. One day, Linda and I were sitting in down in Wyoming somewhere by not too far from Independence Rock, and I told her, I says, do you realize that just about every closet and locker and drawer in this trailer is empty because it's just the two of us? So we figured out we needed to go with something smaller. We did, we went to, a, got a 19 foot fun finder and that seemed like a real small trailer, but it was nicely laid out and everything. And we started going to some more out of the way places. But that's when I noticed that when you tow a commercial trailer on a bumpy dirt road, they start coming apart at the seams because that frame is, is, is flexing on them. And the front seams on the trailers will start opening up. And maybe you've seen that. You look at a used trailer and there's a big gap right where the the front of the trailer is where it meets the side along that edge and you'll see that the seam is opening up and and you'll see that people are putting in all kinds of caulking and it's all messy looking and everything and that's from taking a, a commercial trailer down a dirt road 
But that trailer was comfortable, but once again, we were mostly stuck in RV parks and state parks and campsites that were just off the paved road. So we sold it, and we didn't do too much after that. We didn't buy another trailer. We went on to something else. This was the fun one. We went and bought a C5 Corvette, and I didn't think too much about doing road trips. I just wanted a vet. I thought, you know, it's the time of my life. You know, I think I, I want something nice. And I got a good deal on it from a friend. And man, did we love that car. Oh man. It was so comfortable. The seats were so comfortable. All kinds of power. Passing people on the highway was no problem. <laughs> it was nice. And we started doing road trips in that. With a tent and sleeping bags. And we went all over, headed out into the Midwest and down into the South and Arizona and every place with our tent and sleeping bags and we couldn't have been happier. We would, uh, about every three nights, we would stay at a campground that had showers or, or maybe we'd get a hotel room, you know, just for to be able to take a shower and everything. That was so much fun. We racked up a lot of miles. Do you know those things get 31 miles to the gallon on the highway? <laughs> they do. What a way to travel. Man, I love that. But there's one problem. There's always consequences. You can't take a vet off onto a dirt road. You don't do that. You, you just don't do that. The, the body curves around like this, and anything that the front tires kick up damages the, the under, the, where the body rolls under on them. You cannot take a vet onto a dirt road. And we started realizing that we were missing a lot of places where we really wanted to travel. And basically that's how we ended up where we are right now with the outfit we have. We bought it to be able to haul our ATV around and at the same time to travel to some real out of the way places and, and get off by ourselves into boondocking in remote areas. You forgot the big tent. Oh, I forgot the big tent. Yeah, for a while we went to uh, after we, after we sold the vet, we traveled with a uh, Suburban and a, a big canvas tent. It was a 10 by 10 canvas tent, a spring bar tent. And it went up really easy, but that sucker was heavy. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't put it away wet. So if it rained, you had to wait until the weather improved and dried it out. So we tried that for a while too. And we heated it with a Mr. Heater. That's where that heater belongs, is in a tent like that, that can breathe. But that's what, that, we did that for a while too. Yeah? Yeah. Had fun with it. And that's when we discovered we like to sleep on cots rather than on the ground. That's right. Yeah, at that time too, we bought cots. And discovered how much more comfortable that was. We're getting old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're getting old. It's harder to get up off the ground. Let me show you some things on our outfit here that I like and why we travel the way we do now. Well, we don't take our four-wheeler with us everywhere we go, but believe it or not, that's the reason we bought this trailer to begin with. We were traveling with a tent, like we mentioned, that big canvas tent, and we were hauling this on an open bed trailer, just, you know, just open. And even if you put tarps over it, everything got so muddy and dirty by the time we got to where we were going, we decided we wanted an enclosed trailer to, to haul it around in. And that's how we ended up with our 6x10 cargo trailer. At first it was just mainly to haul the four-wheeler. But as soon as we got it, the first thing we did was peel off the inside paneling and insulate it and pop in a couple windows, a roof vent, some heat. And now we not only had a way to haul the four-wheeler, but we had a really comfortable place to sleep on comfortable beds. Made all the difference in the world. Now we don't take that four-wheeler with us everywhere we go all the time. For example, if we're on a road trip, we don't bring it because it, uh, we would have to unload it every night just you know, before we went to bed or something like that. And sometimes we're in a Walmart parking lot. And that is a drawback to the way we travel. You have to unload the four-wheeler if you happen to be bringing it along. You have to unload it before you can uh, go to bed at night. Now, that brings me to the next feature here. Our vehicle. 
Because you know what, the first thing that comes to mind is, well, if you had a pickup truck, you could just drive the four-wheeler up in the back of the truck, and then you wouldn't have to unload the trailer. And the thing about that is that we like the, the uh, enclosed storage that a Suburban or a Yukon Tahoe has, and we really like these vehicles. We've been driving these for many years. We've had several different years and different models. I even had a diesel Suburban for a while that I really liked. But anyways, this is what we have now. Now up here in Montana, we have to have either four-wheel drive or front-wheel drive. And this is our only vehicle. You can't even drive around town in the wintertime without one or the other. But front-wheel drive isn't, isn't good for towing uh, trailers. Especially if you lose traction on a dirt road or something like that. We had a Mazda CX-9. Nice car. And uh, it's, my daughter has it now. It's lasted a long time without any problems. But if you got an attraction problem, you'd, it was too easy. The front tires would spin because you would have the weight of the trailer on the rear bumper. So it just didn't work for us. This works great. And we love this type of vehicle. And then, you know, all our cooking supplies and everything are in the back of the car. And things are nicely locked up. And yeah, we like it. And that brings me to another thing about this trailer. This little 6x10, as, do, as most of them are, are this way in the 6x10 size, they're high off the ground. So for getting back in on these rough roads, we've got really good ground clearance. And having a single axle, I can turn this thing around just about anywhere. And man, we have turned it around in some really tight places, heading down roads that just dead-ended. And there was, we just have to back it up into the bushes and, and uh, crank it around. And with this trailer, we can do that. For example, today, well, looky here. This is the road into this campsite. Look at this bump in the road we had to drive up and over. You're not bringing, this is probably a six foot high embankment here that I'm standing on top of now. And deep ruts and everything, you're not going to get a very big outfit into a place like this. So this trailer, this outfit works for us. That's not to say that we don't think about something different. We're constantly looking for different kinds of vehicles to do our trips in. We lo we've looked at four-wheel drive vans. Doesn't work. Uh, or the, uh, the new van that, oh, like, for example, one that's interested us a lot is the um, Class B vans that are uh, where the body of the van is extended out and makes more room inside. And you... They generally have a lot of headroom and everything, and they've got an enclosed bathroom and everything. But it wouldn't have even gotten into this campsite. They're just too low to the ground. And sometimes we think about, we think about a different or a bigger cargo trailer. You know, like a 6x12, or my daughter has a 7x14. And we think about that too. And we may, we may go with a larger size. But we need to be able to turn it around in tight spaces so it can't be a tandem axle for us. Tandems tow better, we know that. We've had tandems. But for the places we go, it's got to be a little bit more like, like what we have here. One thing we'd like to have is, a, is an enclosed bathroom inside. Probably could do that if we had like a 7x14. Now you can get a 7x14 with a single axle. And you can raise it up so that it's got uh, more ground clearance too. But it would be nice to have an enclosed compartment with a bathroom, ventilated of course and everything, and not have to go outside in, at O Dark 30 with the bears. Also, when you're traveling with this kind of an outfit, you don't, you don't stick out too much either. You know, when you go into the small towns and everything, you tend to just fit right in. It's, uh, it's small and inconspicuous, and we like that too. And we mainly stick to out-of-the-way places anyway. There was a book by a man named William Least Heat Moon back uh, that I've mentioned in one of my other videos. Came out back in the 1970s, and I think late 60s. It's called Blue Highways. And I really liked what he did. He stayed off all the major freeways. Uh, on the old maps, the main highways, the freeways were red, and all the secondary roads were blue. And that's where the title of the book came from, Blue Highways. But by traveling through the back roads and the back country, you tend to meet the people that 
live in these places and you tend to stay out of the touristy spots and and you get to know what a place is really like and you learn the people you learn the history and we think that uh, out driving an outfit like like this one it's it's just easier for us to do that and we we like it well to my subscribers down in Australia I'm gonna pull a scab off the tinny sit back and enjoy the rest of the evening with my mate <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, you know the drill. Please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment below. I'd like to know what your favorite uh, means of travel is. Whatever it is, please leave a comment below and tell us about it. We'll see you around. <laughs>